Today I'm going to be learning about Norway's success in the Winter Games. I didn't realise until I started this channel and started learning about the interesting facts of Norway that they were the most successful country in Winter Olympics history. It's a great achievement, especially for a country with such a small population, 5.5 million roughly. And people will say a country like Norway is good at Winter Olympics because... It's that sort, it has that sort of climate, snow and that sort of thing. But there's many other countries with similar climates, Canada, the other countries in Northern Europe like Finland, Sweden, different places like that, even Russia and things. So these countries all have bigger populations, but a country of Norway's population is still being able to be so successful. There's something obviously more important than just where it's situated in the weather. So here we're watching one called The Science Behind Norway's Winter Games Success. I want to know more. I love sports. I love all sports. I'm a huge sports fan. So I want to know more about Norway's Winter Games Success. You can tell me in your opinion why you think Norway are so successful. What's Norway's best sport in the Winter Games? Uh, and what do you think? Why, why is Norway so good? Let's check it out. With Norway once again at the top of the Winter Olympic medal count, many are wondering what is the secret to the country's success? Out of all the Winter Olympic Games ever held, Norway has placed among the top three in more than half of them, making it the most decorated Winter Games nation of all time. And that's the thing as well, it's not just about the number of medals and how successful it's the consistency over time. In no other sport, really, or no other event like this, it's just so difficult for a country or for a team to keep that consistency over a long period of time. But Norway clearly have that as well, so something very ingrained in the Norwegian culture. Joining me now is Assistant Professor of Sports Science at the Norwegian University and Science and Technology, Stig Arva Satter. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, Norwegians seem to place a, a real strong emphasis on outdoor living. Talk to me about the role of the of outdoor culture in raising successful athletes? Well, I guess we have a tradition, a history for leisure activities, both organized and non-organized uh, activities. And uh, actually, 80% of Norwegian children are a part of the organized uh, sport in Norway. So that's a quite large number. There's a lot to unpack there. Let, let's, let's look at regionally first, the, the Trondelag region of Norway. It seems to produce a disproportionately yep. large share of Olympic medal winners. Uh, the region generally produces about one-fifth of Norway's overall medals at any given Winter Games. What is it about that area and why does it produce so many successful athletes? Well, uh, there are a local uh, uh, town called Meråker, which is a, a rural area of uh, Trondheim. Uh, where uh, actually many of the medalists uh, come from. I guess it's uh, quite a, a small part uh, of Norway where they have a good history and tradition for developing youth athletes. And uh, I guess uh, many of the, the athletes see the traditions uh, on that parts of Norway and, and uh, use that as motivation to become good athletes themselves. Mm. Yeah, so first two points there. The first one was the focus on children not just with regards to sport, but when I watched a video previously about Norwegian kindergarten and how children are outdoors in their in the in that environment, not just doing sports, but just being outdoors, being active, is very different to a lot of other countries. A lot of countries don't have that culture, especially being from the UK, we don't. Children are always indoors in school, nursery, kindergarten. They don't have that outdoor exposure. Uh, so it's good to see they have that focus also with regards to having that focus on children being involved in sports and activities as well. It's not so strong in a lot of other countries to see that Norway actually focuses on the young and developing children, people from young. It's so important to their future for the people themselves and for the country. And when he's talking about this region or this town as well, it's interesting because things like tradition and success are so important to sports. When you're part of something, if you support a successful football team, for instance, or you're from a town in Norway that's produced a lot of successful sports people before, it's inspirational. It makes people want to follow that path from young again. And in the future, it can only breed, it's like 
success breeds success type of thing. Interesting. Let's talk about that development for a little bit because I was reading that many schools in Norway, they infuse sport into learning, but what's really interesting is they don't seem to place an emphasis on winning. So what is it about this mm. sort of mode of, 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 of developing athletes that turns people into people who are able to win later on in life? Well, actually, we have some children's rights actually within sports saying that uh, we don't uh, keep scores until the, the athletes are 13. And then you could think, uh, why not? Well, the point is that winning competitions isn't important in terms of development because then you just have to compete against bad uh, athletes uh, because you have to have a self-centered uh, development. So you should be uh, focusing on your own skills and try to develop them as best as possible. Mm, that's actually a very good mentality to have and something I've not really seen mentioned too much like being from the UK as I mentioned before like if you're talking decades ago it was all about being competitive it was all about winning they're starting to move away from that a little bit but there's a lot of pushback from parents who are saying when it comes to sports kids should still have that competitive desire they should still want to win but when you see it put like this so maturely, not until 13 that they really care about winning, so they really can focus on themselves and developing themselves, I think it's a great way. And obviously, Norway's success is proof that it works. Tell me what you think about that. If you're from Norway, do you think children should be encouraged to want to win? Or are you happy with this mentality? But there's such a breadth of of um, and variety of sports at the Winter Olympics. And it seems that Norwegians tend to gravitate towards sports that other countries might not necessarily pay a lot of attention to. Absolutely. They're, they're, we have a focus on the winter sports, uh, quite small uh, sports, which uh, of course is smart uh, because then we invest in sports we actually could be good at. So um, I think that's uh, uh, a good uh, uh, way to do it. Mm. So is that a, a purposeful strategy that Norway or Norwegians focus on these maybe less competitive sports so that they can actually win if it is fair enough that's a good idea you want to uh, if you want to be successful in the Winter Olympics it's a good strategy what sort of sports is that I'm not really too au fait, too knowledgeable about winter sports I know of the main things like hockey and being from Scotland I know things like curling and things uh, but what sort of other sports are Norway good at when it comes to the Winter Games, the Winter Olympics? Uh, lastly, Professor, uh, you know, there are a lot of countries out there that spend a lot of money trying to de develop uh, cultures around sport in order to win at the Olympics. Norway seems to have that secret to success. If you had to boil it down into, in, into something that you could export to other countries, what would that secret to Olympic success be in Norway? I think it's uh, our combination of both uh, mass sport and elite sport it, uh, is important. The, as we said, the, the investment in smaller sports could be uh, smart. We have a focus on the athletes uh, and the development of them, of building good environments for, uh, for young athletes. Uh, as I said, the, the late focus of winning. And uh, perhaps the last bit is that uh, actually there, there was uh, developed an organization of elite sport called Olympiatoppen. Uh, which is the knowledge base of the region uh, comparing uh, results between different sports so that we have a knowledge base of that and actually they were established because of the bad Olympics in Calgary in uh, mm. 1988 so I guess you have you to thank for that <laughs> <laughs> well you're welcome sir and thank you to Norway for such great performances this year we appreciate it professor thanks for being here. yeah that was a great uh, insight into Norway's success as I mentioned it really has nothing to do with the climate and location of Norway. It's very strategically thought about. There's a lot of different factors there that go into making the decision on how to uh, approach these Winter Olympics. And it's really interesting to know about that one with regards to the Calgary Games. So obviously they had a bad performance. To be able to take a bad performance and implement strategies to not repeat that sort of I don't know if it was, you can class it as failure I don't know what happened there but to not repeat that failure 
and just improve. I think that's a great thing. You see that so many times in football, countries have bad World Cups or Euros. They try to implement new strategies to try and never have that happen again. And it's very difficult to do that. Norway's clearly been very successful and that's great. So yeah, tell me what you think about Norway's success in the Olympic, the Winter Olympic Games. Uh, what's your proudest moment following Norway? What's the best gold medal you can remember? And do you think this can continue into the future? Thanks.